do you remember what Winston Churchill said about democracy? That democracy is the worst political system except for all the others. An economic system organized around markets, private property, and individual choice is the worst possible ec economic system except for all the others. Sometimes I say the free market is amazing. Unparalleled source of growth and innovation and opportunity. I love it. But it's a tiger. You need to keep it on a leash. If all you have is the free market and you say, go, make profits anywhere you can, the tiger will eat the world. It will fish out every last fish, cut down every last tree, poison the skies, kill the people. So we need to find a way to put the tiger on a leash. But that doesn't seem to me impossible. We're a very smart species and we've done it before. Transparent, responsible, inclusive and sustainable capitalism. So correcting the capitalism with these four principles. And the idea is to, to, to produce common goods and services which serves the uh, collective aspirations of our societies toward more prosperity and peace and to address all the societal transitions in the green transition, digital transition, social transition, economic transition and governance transition. Capitalism is supposed to be about the widely disseminated, decentralized uh, distribution of decision making. Capitalism is traditionally contrasted with the idea of a planned society. One of the most striking phenomena of the recent decades has been the rise of a new kind of capitalism in which um, there really are sort of planning uh, mechanisms uh, that the algorithms that Google employs or that Amazon employs uh, are in a sense uh, planning instruments. If capitalism is a system to unlock human ingenuity and deploy it to solve the problems that confront us, then bring it on. Right now, you know, we're at this crossroads. We're either going to be a class of big useless, where our only function is to click and swipe and wait for some product to be delivered to us, and our cognitive capacities will atrophy. Or we're going to unlock that talent. Will capitalism survive? Elements, it will always survive everywhere in, in, in elements and the way it's used. I just would like to see us more sophisticated and not have these blanket statements. The market system's good, the market system's bad. And, you know, you know, in some of the thinking and work that I've done, I've tried to approach this not from an ideological viewpoint. I think what's, what has happened to economists right now, we are so attached to this um, world of uh, precision, precision and objectivity. Our tools are so, uh, we, we're relying so much on mathematical deductivism and modeling. We just see ourselves as modelers. And I think we're losing a little bit the poetry of all this. <laughs> the question of being creative, of being, I mean, we have to just think about something else because clear there are limitations here. Humanity comes back to the issue of social system. And I think that Capitalism, again, is one part of that, and we have to think back to issues like the power structure, the political structure, the legal structure. There are a lot of questions which need to be answered in terms of allowing people to engage and participate in our economic system relative to what we do today. It is fair to say that a large part of the world uh, do not get to participate the way that we in the advanced economies do. I think that there is something uh, deeply flawed about this. And yes, I do feel that there are a lot of different ways. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to define it because especially in today's world, I wouldn't know what those structures would look like. But I'm sure there are better ways to organize society than just having a few people calling the shots and not being able to make a lot of like change on a more equitable scale. I think we are due for change in the way we structure our economic system. Um, I'm not sure exactly how it would manifest, but I think um, we could build economic systems where people are more personally implicated in, um, in the production of whatever it is that they're like, using or consuming or um, involved with. Well, capitalism 
as we know, it seems like a very cold concept. Uh, you know, efficiency, um, systems and mechanisms and players interacting with each other based on a rational way. Um, now, China's approach is a bit different. Um, it's a combination of uh, market mechanisms, which work very well, but also a very strong role of the state. Uh, what's a defining characteristics of the Chinese state is that it not only controls resources, but it can mobilize resources and it can allocate resources. And it doesn't have to do it according to market demands and market needs. And sometimes this is very important and useful. Mm -hmm.